Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 229 of Manage the Wild. I'm your host, Nick Madsen. Daylight savings time and wildlife. What do they have in common? It's not very good. Something like Halloween. It's death. That's what happens. Researchers took data from 1994 all the way through 2021 on wildlife vehicle collisions and noticed that 10% of all wildlife collisions take place in a two-week period. And that's in November when daylight savings time happened. Researchers have chalked it up saying that this shift, the abrupt time shift and the pattern shift that humans have directly conflicts with the deer and the way that things are going. And there's a few reasons why. One, decreased daylight. By getting rid of daylight savings time, it puts rush hour in those evening hours where it's typically getting darker. So you are less likely to see the animals. And so it creates some conflicts there because wildlife are more active during the dawn and dusk because that's typically when predators have the hardest time spotting animals is during dawn and dusk. And that's exactly when animals really like to move. Uh, Many of the wildlife species out there that are coming in conflict with these vehicles are crepuscular. Uh, It's a term that means they are active during low light periods. That's that dawn to dusk period. And so animal behavior puts them on the roadways at this time when we we ask them not to. Please don't go on the road, but they do. They're not listening very well. But their behavior puts them on the roads when rush hour is at its peak. Now you add not only their crepuscular animals, but now you add migration where they're moving from a high elevation to a lower elevation. And so now they've got to migrate across these roadways, these highways, these freeways, and they've got to move to these areas where they want to winter and get out of these cold temperatures and deep snows. Obviously, after last year's winter, we can see that the snow can have a pretty devastating effect on wildlife. And so this is the importance of migration. But again, that puts you... That increases the likelihood of wildlife collisions because they are crossing roads. You have the reduced visibility. And then another behavior uh, is the rut is going on where males and females are trying to mate to carry on the next generation. And males, just like when I was very young, are dumb. And I'm, I'm probably still considered dumb by many, and that's okay. But the rut makes their attitude even worse. They are oblivious. I have watched deer run down highways chasing does. You can see multiple videos of males trying to chase females through parking lots because they are just so focused on what they are doing that they have no idea what's going on around them. There is a grouse from, uh, I believe it's Norway. There's a video of a grouse from Norway that... These two males are fighting, and a golden eagle comes in and kills the one grouse. And the other grouse that's standing there watching the one male be killed starts aggressively attacking the golden eagle because he thinks he's now trying to steal the female. And the golden eagle got a two for a two for one and ended up killing both of the grouse because they're just so dumb. Uh, A lot of A lot of focus goes in on finding those mates and uh, making sure that you are passing your genetics to the next year and having more um, offspring. (sighs) Research also shows that uh, you're going to see between a 16 and an 18% increase in deer vehicle collisions by Keeping daylight savings time instead of getting rid of it, you could save a total or prevent 36,550 deer deaths. You could prevent that by not getting rid of daylight savings time. You could get rid of 33 human deaths you could have prevented and reduced 2,054 human injuries and saved, because it costs money whenever you crash, $1.2 billion.
all by not getting rid of daylight savings time. I don't know. How, how do you guys feel about daylight savings time? Me, the only way it really affects me is one day I'm on time and the next day I'm late and then I know I need to adjust my clocks. But apparently with you, when you put that many humans together and we all get done at five or six o'clock with work and we go on about our day, apparently that has a real effect on wildlife. Um, there is a, a gentleman, he's a, an author. He wrote in to the Salt Lake Tribune and he is also an associate professor. He's writing a book. It's called Wolves, Grizzlies, and Greenhorns. Maximilian Werner for the University of Utah wanted to know why if at this time of year that there's all these accidents, there is a road in Salt Lake where there is not a single wildlife sign. And would, if the state of Utah put up wildlife crossing signs, would people pay more attention and would less animals be killed? I don't know if that would happen or not. Are people aware of the signs? Um, are people paying attention? I know there's a, a road not far from where I live that when I was the dead deer picker upper for the state of Utah, that uh, I would drive, I still drive it slow at certain times of day because there are trees that come up and it's a natural funnel for these deer to cross the road. Every time you come through there, there's does or fawns sitting on both sides of the road. You know, those suckers are waiting until they see a car and then they just step out in front of it. So I drive really slow. Not really slow, but I drive slower and I'm more vigilant of those areas. There was also a highway not too far from here, which offered, there was agricultural ground, there was a river and a lot of trees and surrounded by urban. But it was nice for these deer to come out of the mountains and they would come into this agricultural area. They would sit in these trees and then eventually they would get up and they would cross the highway. And I would pick up 15, 20 deer a month during the winter periods. And you would see a lot. And eventually that all stopped. And it's not because they put up a fence. It's because they built a high school and got rid of that agricultural area and those areas where wildlife hung out. And two things happened. One, there was no more, there was no longer a place for wildlife to hang out. And two, I believe they killed all the adults off that were bringing their fawns back each year. And so there was no win for that solution or there was an, uh, it was a no win solution. We just killed everything. Um, but research does show that there are some effective tools to be able to reduce wildlife collision. The number one is, and we are never going to get it to pass. It's just not going to happen. The number one thing that we can do to help wildlife on roads is to reduce speed. And people just aren't excited about that option. Uh, there was a city that had uh, a large amount of vehicle collisions just due to a large urban population. They were also experiencing uh, a huge growth in residential building. And so areas that had normally been agricultural uh, started to have an increase in housing. And these deer took up areas that... Uh, they had normally in the past been agriculture, and now they found themselves coming into um, neighborhoods and uh, parks and whatnot that had not been there before. And they wanted to, the city wanted to know how they could reduce the amount of vehicle and deer collisions that were taking place. Research showed that they could reduce their speed limit from 35 down to 25 and it would eliminate 86%. I don't know. I made that number up, but it was in the, it was in the eighties. Uh, they would reduce it by 80% if they went from 35 to 25 and it was rejected because that's too slow. Um, nobody wanted to be inconvenienced, and so they were looking for other ways. So the other way that they decided to deal with wildlife was just trapping them and uh, relocating them. That became very expensive. So then they did the trap and euthanize program because they didn't want to reduce speeds. 
So there's a whole lot going on, but November 5th, over the next couple of weeks, as we get closer to that time, you're going to see an uptick in wildlife on the roadways. Hopefully you see them. Uh, they're there. And if you're not seeing them, it's because you're either visually impaired or you're distracted. But make sure you are aware of what's going on around you. Tell me how you guys feel about daylight saving time. Do you like it? Do you hate it? Do you find that uh, it's beneficial? Me, just personally, I don't really care. Uh, one day I'm on time, the next day I'm late. That's kind of how I view it. All right, you guys, have a great day. Stay wild.